All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. My name is Steve Tokowski. Um, I'm a character designer, animation director, and um, toy designer. Um, you can check out my stuff at the following sites here. Um, my talk is going to be a little bit more uh, less hands-on with ZBrush, more talking about how I come up with my character designs and getting stuff from 2D to 3D. I'll do a little bit of a uh, tiny bit of demo at the end to show some of my 4.8 uh, beta stuff. Um, I was going to kind of kick in and show you a body of work that I started working on about five years ago. Um, and I want to give some shout outs. Um, how many people here have heard of uh, Inktober? Okay. And also, what about uh, Bottober or March of Robots? Okay. So in 2012, I uh, was aware of the Inktober uh, social media uh, art, uh, not really challenge, but just participation. And I started doing that. And then in 2013, I. Uh, also uh, was aware of uh, my good buddy DaCosta Bailey, who was uh, chocolate soup for those um, online. He was wanted to start something called Bottober, and then we kind of moved over to Martial Robots. And in 2013, I was also learning Keyshot for the first time. So I decided to use that as a platform of uh, doing a sketch a day. I had I just had finished a, a big freelance gig, and so I had uh, a block of time available to do this. And so I set out to do a sketch in the morning. So I'd spend you know no more than like half an hour. Uh, just kind of trying to crank something out and then jump right into Maya and sometimes ZBrush, like this was a ZBrush model, I would jump back and forth to whatever I felt comfortable in and just kind of try to do some, uh, some character stuff one a day and then uh, jump into Keyshot and I was learning Keyshot uh, right, right as I was doing these. Um, something you notice about my stuff too is um, there's a simplicity to my work but it's, uh, I kind of like to build up the, the uh, complicated forms from simple shapes. And um, when I'm drawing these things, you can see a lot in uh, vol volumetrics in my, in my drawings. That's how I, that's how I, I think when I draw, I, I visualize in volumes. Um, my background is uh, I was a fine art major, uh, did figure drawing was my uh, area specialty. And then I also was doing a self-taught computer graphics. This is like in the <clears throat> early 80s. And, um, <laughs> We didn't, have, we didn't have great schools like no one here. Um, I had to do a lot of stuff on my own, but uh, yeah, I used Wavefront back in the day, um, worked for a, a small graphic design company in Arizona doing logos, and then I got to go to New York uh, in, two, in 1994, and I worked at Blue Sky Studios for seven years, and I was an animator there, and worked on uh, Ice Age and Bunny and Alien Resurrection and that kind of stuff. And then I was an uh, animation director uh, at a, two places in New York, um, Hornet and Guava. And then in 2008, I decided to start my own, uh, my own company called Sketchbot. And that's when I really wanted to kind of get into doing a, a toy and start taking some of my character designs and doing them myself. So uh, I, what you see up here is uh, the results of that. We released in 2010, and we're going to raffle two of these off tonight. Um, but, you know, my, my, my style is um, I, like, I like robots too, and I love like, all the heavy mech, and I love all the detail stuff. But... I kind of don't have the patience sometimes to sit there and do <laughs> these really, really involved uh, pieces. I like to kind of get the idea out really fast, so I tend to keep my concepts pretty, pretty simple. This just shows uh, the, the first group shot. I tried sending out a key shot and then taking it into Photoshop and doing a little bit of you know, corrections and, and added all the details in Photoshop at the time. I wasn't doing this all in, in, in the model. Um, so then uh, fast forward a uh, couple more months and Marshall Robots came out. and. So this time I was like, I really want to start uh, using some backplates to composite my characters over. And right away, this starts kind of like introducing some narrative and like, what are these robots doing? And um, every day, it was, it was a fun, you know, what should I do today? Just come up with a concept. Um, and you can start seeing uh, you know, the, the design language uh, starts to become more evident now. I'm using like, you know, similar limbs and I'm doing a little bit of kit bashing here and there to try to get these things done pretty quickly. But, uh, again, just using stock out of the box uh, key shot. One thing is uh, that I have done recently is I bought a, a Ricoh Theta 360 camera, so I now shoot my own HDRIs. But back at the time, I was used to using the stock stuff, but I would also tweak it. So if you guys are using key shot, I would highly recommend uh, changing the defaults. Um, for instance, uh, for Horizons, um, if you're trying to like make something match up, like. The, the HR that I use in all these shots, they don't match the back plates. But what I'll do is I'll color, do a little bit of color correcting, and I'll also be changing the height and the size of the, 
of the um, HR map to kind of like help, fit, help it fit into the uh, environment. So these are all fun. This, uh, this model went back and forth with, with, into ZBrush. I, uh, I did some poly painting on those cones to get a quick uh, map out into Keyshot. This was a little uh, Hellbot. Um, it was a 25th anniversary. Uh, every, all the artists were doing their homages to Hellboy, so I did a little, a little mech, mech Hellbot here. And then this little uh, group shot of those guys. And just a little, as a little side note, from, from this little experimentation um, of work, I got noticed by the Jim Henson Company, and they saw this, this uh, portfolio of work, and they called me and they wanted me to know if I would like to do a TV show based on this. So I'm actually in development on a show loosely based on some of these designs, but uh, you, know, you never know where your work's going to be seen and how it's going to be uh, you know, um, accepted out there, but I just put stuff up on social media and you know, get the word out there. And you know, I'm active on Behance and on ArtStation. That's something that's kind of seen too. These, are, uh, these were done last year. These were for the March of uh, Robots 2016. Um, th this year I, I was trying to do more found objects and trying to create bots out of, out of you know, I try to change up the theme every year. I don't want to just do the same thing over and over again, so I'll, I'll change up some stuff. And um, I love construction equipment. I, you know, I take tons of reference of construction equipment, so I was finding some of these obscure pieces and I would, I was also using Procreate a lot, so doing all my drawings on the iPad Pro, and I would uh, start using Procreate more and uh, isolating p pieces of, of equipment. There's, there's a bobcat out in front of our house uh, across the street, and I, I took a picture of it, and I ended up cropping everything out except just the front end of that and, and did a character based on that. Um, and I found this old video game and just added some arms and legs on it. So it's like right there, and just kind of getting into giving some narrative to these pieces. There's a famous keep on trucking character that I, uh, volumed up and then uh, the guy on the right was one that I decided I'm going to try doing this one all, all in Keyshot, I'm uh, sorry, ZBrush and Keyshot. So this is, uh, you can see the model here and um, yeah, it translates really nicely over to, to Keyshot. Um, a, couple, uh, a couple things to keep in mind too is like when I'm translating stuff this over, um, I also tend to work uh, box model, very low res um, and some will go over a little bit of what I already talked about but I, my favorite thing is I always use an eight-sided uh, sphere with quads on the end because I'm always constantly uh, going into subdivide mode. And so that's my kind of like one of my building blocks is I, I like to keep my stuff really, I think I, th I always design it with this way. So for the years of doing commercial work, it's always like, you know, we have the high res model, but I'm always thinking about the animators for the rigging and we always have a low res model. So what I do with, with my own personal work is I tend to try to take that game uh, polygon modeling approach to my own work. I like to have that set up, think about my UVs because I, I, I also want to use Substance Painter and tool bag and all that kind of cool stuff. So I want to make sure that my geometry is sound and, and uh, easy to edit um, at that size. And then this is just like a, a final render for that, uh, that piece there. This guy here also was an, an admitted, another concerted effort to just do it all in ZBrush. My, my workflow is typically Maya, ZBrush, Keyshot, because um, I've been using Maya since, since day one. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty fast with it, but I've been getting faster with ZBrush now, and especially after, when the Z modeler came out, I was like, that was awesome. And then I got to be on the beta for 4R8, and that was also a game changer for me. The live building stuff, which I'll show you guys at the end, it was, it was, it's, it's awesome. Um, it's another way of visualize, visualizing the, the, the solids and, and building up forms. So this one was, was kind of fun. This one was all done in ZBrush, um, and then sent over to a key shot. And here you see a little uh, details of how I set this up. This one also, I, I did a 3D print of this one too. This one, I'm also big into 3D printing, so um, ZBrush is great for uh, key and sliding all your articulation points and uh, sending yourself up to STLs. This is an older piece. I, I want to show that I also do uh, organic stuff. Um, I, I don't know if anybody's seen this book before. I had this book when I was a kid, like in the se early 70s, and it always stuck with me, and I found a copy of it, and I bought it because uh, I really wanted to, to make this character, and I just... It was like an homage to this, this story that I grew up with. Um, but it's, it's kind of fun, and, and just the fact that I, was, you know, I couldn't do this all in, in Maya at all. So was, you know, being able to do it in ZBrush was, was, was key. Um, and then, um, this is kind of fun. So a couple years ago, we went to my first trip to Hawaii, so, and I love tiki culture. So I was doing some sketching, and I was like, you know, I've got to do my sketch bot as a, as a tiki bot. And so uh, this character here, um, I actually did it in Maya. 
and use that as my uh, prototype for, for the, the manufacturing uh, process. So I was able to get all that stuff 3D printed on a high res printer. So I had the, the geometry, which was very clean, very low res. And so I started using that as a basis for doing my own DIY inside the computer. Um, so here's my way of, of, of taking that, that geometry, going into ZBrush, and then you know, cutting it up, adding detail, playing around with it, doing the customary uh, clay render to fool you if it's a real render or not. Um, and here's a, you can see some of the shots here. So this is like what the geometry looks like. And then um, you know, sculpting some of the details. And then on the far right is the, the slot and key. And that actually was um, printed up. And actually, I gave a talk about this, I think it was like three years ago at SIGGRAPH when ZBrush was there. We did, we did a little talk on this. And then I actually, I just re recently revisited this too. So um, a couple months ago, I, I jumped, I, I redid some textures and I jumped back into Substance Painter, which I love. And if you guys are using that program, it's an amazing program. Um, so to get these results, it's really fast. Um, and then just another thing too, the, the cinema, the, the, getting the cinematography in the, in the software and I have to like export this out. I mean, this is all screenshots right from Substance Painter. So being able to go in through and add some lens flare and depth of field, um, it's just amazing to like compose in this, in this way. And then here's a shot from uh, Marmoset, which also has a great um, pre-visualization as well. All right, so now we're going to jump into some of the, my uh, 4 8 beta images. And kind of almost at the same time, I also got invited to be on the Keyshot beta, which was awesome too, because there's some new shader materials that they um, opened up, which I'll show you guys later, which were amazing. But yeah, this is my first, uh, I was actually working on a project. I was, a, I was on a job already, so I had to kind of like pick and choose when I got to jump into the, the uh, beta. So when I jumped into this one, I, the first thing I did was let's do something simple. Let's take some, some, some simple volumes and just, you know, make a little vehicle. Um, the next thing was um, I did a little ring, a little ZBrush ring here, which was only about five pieces that created this, all the booleans on this one here. And then uh, jumping into these little cubes, I'll show you some of the stuff live. These are these are really fun to do. And um, around this time, uh, the Keyshot beta was was coming out, and they had this new cloudy plastic material that was amazing. So I had to start using that, um, doing some like subsurface scattering and whatnot. But just being able to create these shapes with the boolean, and here's like the the cutters on the left. You can see how my, I'm going through and visualizing that. Just having a blast. Just uh, just noodling around. Whenever I had free time, I would jump in and just start placing objects around and cutting them up. So then um, I was like, okay, now I have some time to, to really sit with it. And my daughter had got this uh, little Chuck E. Cheese Nerf gun. And I'm, I'm the kind of person, I, I look at everything around the house, whatever, everything's a reference to me. So when I saw this, I was like, this is a perfect candidate for the Booleans because everything in here is like a solid intersecting or being subtracted by another solid. And so for me, this is like, this is the perfect challenge to do a real, a real full up piece. Um, so what I did is I took a, a nice orthographic picture, just like isolated some of the, the main forms and how was I gonna visualize some of these cuts. And here's some, the beginning of that. Um, working, my way, working my way through the pieces. You notice those little uh, spheres cutting out the uh, handle grip. That's all, all booleans. Everything in here was pretty much a boolean. And then this was an early test with that soft plastic material. I didn't make this a hollow, so it was a solid piece. So the, um, the shader reacts differently with sh uh, hollow and, and solid pieces, which you'll see later. Um, this was, this was just a, a, a translucent plastic that wasn't a cloudy shader, but the, just kind of see what it looked like translucent. And then I started going in, uh, Keyshot has the material graph now, so you can actually go in and start using um, um, curve, edge wear. It's kind of a procedural effect, but it, it works pretty nicely to, to bang out stuff like this pretty quickly in, inside Keyshot. So th there's no UVs on here, it's just using the, the, the procedure. And then I jumped, changed around and tried some other uh, procedural textures as well. That was a fun piece to work on. This was uh, just a simple test to show um, a solid piece on the left and a hollowed out piece on the right. And the cool thing about this, this cloudy plastic material is you can change. It's based on real world uh, dimensions. So like if this was like, you know, one inch tall, you can actually specify the wall thickness when you're um, defining the, the scatter 
for the, uh, the, the cloudy plastic. And it's, it works great. I mean, I just, just let this cook for about five minutes and you get this, these results out of Keisha. It's just amazing to match real world properties. Um, this is a fun one too. I'll show you this model in a second. This was another uh, Boolean test. So uh, again, just throwing some pieces in there, doing some cuts. And I'll show you guys some, some of the, my tricks too. I, the thing about, about doing the Boolean is you get really sharp edges. Um, and I don't like the really hard edge after the cut. So what I'll do is I'll decide at certain points in the Boolean to retopologize. And I'll just run it through the zebra mesher and kind of like if I, if I get a little extra um, edge wear or a little bit of curve around some of the edges, I'll let, I'll let it be because it has more of a realistic quality to it. Nothing in real life has that sharp, sharp computer edge to it. So then I'll, I'll do that, I'll retopologize, and then I'll go back in, I'll start doing more cuts on top of that. So I just kind of, it's an iterative process, so I'll keep on adding to that. But I mean, look at this, this looks like a real, real piece of plastic, and it's, it's amazing we can get out of the key shot now. Oh, and then some of you might know, um, so I did the Keyshot avatar for uh, 2006, uh, for the what, Keyshot 6 release. So this is like a, a more complicated model, but was, uh, we took this one back in. This one I did use uh, both Maya and ZBrush for. So it was basically, because I was going to rig it, um, I, I, I did it, I laid out the pieces in, in Maya first, um, and then did all the panels and the, all the cut loops, uh, the, the edge loops and the cutting of all the pieces in, inside ZBrush and retopologized it there. So then we took this model and I was like, okay, let's throw it into the new key shot. So this is just a, a basic glass model. This was a, a first pass of, their, of that shader and then the settings kind of got better and so we kind of be able to kind of dial in. So you can kind of see some of the pieces were actually hollowed out like the thigh, but the, the wheel itself was a solid piece. So you can kind of, I, I, left the, I left the material on all the pieces so they all have the same, um, the same um, values. You could go in and, and, and fine-tune each one, but I wanted to see how it would hold up. And here's some other views of this. It was, just, it was a really fun to kind of take a really complicated model and see how that, that shader was holding up. All right, so then the next thing I did was um, my daughter had these little, these little uh, clothespins, and I saw this piece, and I was like, that's another perfect candidate for a, a Boolean test. And this was the setup. It was really simple. So the, the white rectangle cube is um, the base and then I have the green cuts are the exterior cuts for the contour, the yellow cuts are the interior and then the red cylinders are on top of it. This is all done as one, one boolean cut. Um, so this is a couple different material tests on here. Um, the coil was pretty simple to add and then a uh, couple different side views here adding the, uh, some of the, uh, the mold parts and then I had to actually put the grooves in. So I dynameshed the result and then just simply scaled in and, and just uh, moved some of that geometry to create that little groove there and then some other materials. So that's all I have to show that for that right now. And then I can jump into ZBrush and show you guys some stuff. So are there any questions right now? Bueller? All right, come on, ZBrush. Hmm. There we go. So. so let's see what we got here. Bear with me a second here. I'm not a PC guy. Even though I just put together a PC to get into VR, I'm still, uh, there we go. No, that's not what I want. Where's my, that's not what I want. Don't tell me my, ah, they're projects. That's why I cancel that. All right, so I'll show this cutaway demo first. And 
And also you have to forgive me because I forgot to load up my own um, custom UI. So I'm going to be flying with R as a UI here. Actually, you know what? Let me do the, uh, can I, in, can I, uh, ah, what is this? Cancel. Um, is there a way to init this here? Let's do this really quick. And then we'll init the config. We'll do this for now. Go back here. That's the one thing why, why we used to teach as well. Um, I kind of told everyone when I was teaching, especially Maya, is like, don't change the, uh, the interface because it was a hard example that everyone's stationed and uh, help them out. But with ZBrush, you kind of have to. It's like, I, I kind of fought it for a while and then I was like, you know what, I got to do it my own too. So I had set up my own defaults, but I forgot to <laughs> store my, to bring my configuration with me. So I'm just going to shoot with a stock. All right, here we go. Let's go in here. Um, one thing I like to do is under edit preferences, I like to, um, I always love to, to use a lot of click to solo. I just find that helps me out really fast. Okay, so what do we got here? I don't know if I have all the, the layers that I wanted on this particular one, but I think I was going to show some of the tricks to getting things to look not as, as hard edged. Let's see what they got here. So right there, you can see that was the first cut. I, I, don't, have, I don't have the, the previous cuts in here, but this is, what, this is the result you get. So you can see that you know, when you go in here and subdivide this, it's not going to look really pretty. You're going to get a lot, of, a lot of crunchiness around here because the, the polygons just don't hold up. So what I like to do is, is re-dynamesh um, that. Sorry, retopologize it first. And if I do want to dynamesh it, then I can go on and continue sculpting in that sense. Um, but that kind of breaks up, the, breaks up the, the edges for me a little bit, and I really like how that looks. And then I create a interior piece. Let me just shut that up for a second. Let's cut this one down. OK, now let me turn on, actually, uh, the render light booleans. So there's, the, there's the, the outer and there's the inner piece. So if I select on this, you can't see the result, but if I turn on this, and if you go uh, show your wireframe, you can see, the, you can see the, the, the cutter. And now if I can go here and I can actually move this, you can see how it's, it's updating in real time. I turn that off, you can see I could edit the cutter there. So that right there, just being able to do cutaways is, is pretty amazing. And I can add on to this too. So let's say we like this, and then we want to, I'm just going to add another piece in here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uh, append another piece in here. We'll just do something like this. I love this being able to hold on shift too to constrain your your move. And if you guys know this too, you can actually now hold on alt and uh, constrain on two axes, which is which is a time saver too. Again, forgive me, I'm on a PC keyboard here for the first time in a while. All right, so say we just want to add another piece in here. Go ahead and drop that down, and it automatically gives us a live Boolean preview, which is pretty awesome. How many of you guys play with live Booleans? Are you guys getting into it? Yeah, you really need to, to, to check that out some more. It's, it's a great way to model. And if any of you guys are coming from Modo, it's, it's very similar to a Mesh Fusion as well. So then at, the, at this point, say that I like, I like this result here, I just added that new piece in there. And you can also hold on the control key is it control or is it 
shift control. There's a way to duplicate that. I can't remember how to do it the wrong way. Of course, I can't forget. I remember how to do it. There's a way to, to duplicate that piece. I can't remember how to do it. There was a control. All right, anyhow, let's say we're just gonna add that piece there like that. All right, so that's, that's what we got. Then we can take that result and go to Boolean. And also, I like to keep, um, if you're gonna use um, dynamic subdivisions on any of this stuff, make sure you hit dynamic subdivision before you do the, the Boolean, you can make Boolean, let it think. And then we've got our new piece right there. Now this piece will have some grunge on the edge there and on the, the new cut. So let's try one thing I like to duplicate before I do this, and then we'll try doing a zero mesh on that. We'll see what we get. Was that me? <laughs> what fell? <laughs> Okay, there we go. So I had the DK, that, that's, that's not bad. You know, it's like I can live with that if I'm just banging out some quick concepts. And I can't show you, because they don't have Keyshot 7, so I can't show you what that shader looks like, but. Um, let's do a quick, let's do a quick new, um, from some scratch, I was trying to show you something from scratch here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do a couple pieces here. And this is how easy to set up the, the Boolean. So we just go through here, and you've got, sorry, we're not gonna start. But this will be our start. So you hit, the, you hit the arrow up here to start this object, and then you click on this one to be the, the cutter. This one's hidden, so it's not gonna take effect. Go over to Render, Light Boolean, uh, it's already on, but if it's not on, you have to make sure you turn it on. And, Is it? There it goes. All right. So right there, it's live. And if you want to do some subdividing on it, you can hit that. And I usually like to go in here and start playing around with the uh, dynamic subdivision. So one thing I like to do is take up the, the smoothing subdivision so that the cut is smooth and, and not faceted. And you can play around with the, the grid. You can add a bevel or a chamfer to it and affect your coverage. So you can get some interesting cuts there. And let's say we like that. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna duplicate that and use that. Make that a cutter. Let's keep it like that. Let's duplicate that one more time. the subtraction. I mean, like, so right there, I mean, like, you know, like three pieces of cutting out, you're creating a pretty complicated shape. Let's add, yeah. Can you show your dynamic subdivision settings for instance, on this on this guy here, let me let me he's he's hidden. Um, I'm sorry, I accidentally hit the start on that. I don't want to hit a start on that one. Uh, 
There we go. So for instance, on these cubes, I've got the dynamics. If I turn dynamic off, you can see what it's just a, that's what it looks like. And if I turn it on, I can change the coverage, change the beveling, and how the, uh, how it subdivides which is very useful. So, you know, you're not, you're not actually, I'm actually doing a, a, an actual subdivision. It's still a very low res uh, box. But the cool thing about this is that when you go to do the, the dynamic uh, subdivision, you can make sure that you um, select this button here. I'm sorry, this button down here that says, uh, use the, the dynamic subdivision applied when you do the Boolean. Otherwise, it'll just, it'll, it won't be that way. So when I was first doing some, some pieces, like on that, on that gun, I had, there were really a lot of pieces I was trying to manage and I would export them out and I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to, that one cut I did wasn't, you know, was, I didn't up the resolution, so I had to go back and recreate some of the stuff. One thing is you have to kind of, you know, it can get really, you know, crazy, but you can do this thing where you can do auto, auto collapse your, um, your groupings. So, so it's not really, a, it's a hierarchy, not yet, but it's kind of gets you the idea that you can expand and contract these areas to see what you're, what's, what's lying underneath those and move, them, and move them accordingly as well. So let's go back and click that. Hold on here. That should be a negative and that should be a negative. And then when you hit, uh, I'm hitting Shift F or wireframe. That this way gives you a, a preview of what the, what the object looks like, and you can toggle it off. Toggle it on and off. And now let's let's um, go ahead and, and make a boolean of this one. So go ahead and create the boolean. It's showing sugar pretty fast. Okay, there's our piece. That's weird. Why is it asking me to enter the name? Did I just freeze here? There we go. That's weird. All right. So now let's take a look at it. So you can see how it's kind of, it'll hold up nicely in Keyshot, but yeah, it's like you're not going to want to subdivide that again because that's pretty wonky. Look at all those triangles. So. I'd like to duplicate this, and then we'll try a zero mesh on it and see what we get. It's a little rugged, a little rugged, but if I hit the D key, it's not too bad. I can, I can refine and continue on that, but say like I can use that, and I kind of like the, the edges I'm getting there. Or another alternative would be to try this. Go into this piece again. Let's duplicate that before we do another test. Like that one. And we could try running it through Dynamesh first. So we'll do something like uh, 2048. There we go. So now you get your evenly distributed quads. And if you need to go in and maybe do some smoothing on that, you could do that. And you know, do some sculpting on that. I'm going to break up the edge. Um, let me show you one other thing really quick. I'll show you the, uh, the clothespin because that was a kind of a fun one to, to construct. You guys see that? Oh, sorry about that. All right. So here we go with the clothespin. And you can see here all the pieces 
just that I used for that half. So there was I keep on hitting this command here. Let's, let's do that. There we go. So these are all the, the inserts. I just created those negative shapes that sat in there. Go ahead and hide that. These are the cutters. And if we go in here and turn on. Okay, it is on. Sorry, hit that. I keep on hit, something's up with this whack on. I keep on hitting the wrong. There we go. Bam. Okay. That was a negative as well. And then that bottom. That should not be that. There we go. So there's the pieces there. And then what I did on this one, I think I have. So this was the result, which was this. Okay, so I just want to show you this real quick. So that was, the, that was the first cut. So you can see how they're really, you know, jagged, jagged polygons there. So what I did was I took, that looks pretty terrible, going to the subdivision, subdivision mode. And then so I, I retopologized it and got that, which I really liked. And it held up pretty nicely because I wanted those nice smooth edges. And then and then what I did was, I don't have that other piece in here, but what I did with it for that other area was I just went ahead and um, I'm just going to use the move tool. I just went in and I, I just masked out some of this area here. It's not showing. You know how it's always weird when you're on a different system and it's like <laughs> all the settings are. It really is true, man. Demo on a different system is, is tough. I just went through and put some little dimples in to match up the, the reference. There was one on top as well. I think it was like, there was one in the middle here. I just basically did that and sent that out and that refracted the, the light properly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I encourage you guys to jump in and start using that, that, that uh, light boolean. It's, it's a time saver. Um, and it starts start getting you to think about looking at real world objects and how you would break down the, the forms and, and see how they're put together. Um, I'm kind of a little early. Um, you guys have any questions? We can take a break here and we can uh, give Eric some time to, to do his noodling. Do you have any? We do. Cool. Uh, there was a point where you could actually see like a transparency of the like thing that you were the boolean. Yeah. Was that just turning? I was it just polyframe doing that? Yeah. So if you like right now, if I turn polyframe off, you don't see the piece. But if I turn it on, you'll see what the, the selected piece. Okay. So you don't out. you don't need transparency on to do that. Just it'll automatically be kind of transparent. Yeah. If you use okay. There's some. I think they they added something in in the the second patch which I have. I think there's something in the preference where you can actually uh, define how this is displayed when you go into that mode, but I haven't played around with it yet. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I know Eric has a full demo pack, so he might want to start early. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll take a question back here. After you're done with the details and stuff, uh, do you optimize the object itself? Uh, I mean, decimated or? It depends on how I want to use it. So if it's going to go to 3D printing, I'll, I'll run it through Decimation Master. Um, for concepting stuff, I'll keep it at this kind of a level of detail and send it over to Keyshot, and it works pretty well. OK, thanks a lot. Yeah. But also, what I, I am kind of keeping in mind, too, like if I was going to take this into Substance Painter, I would. Uh, probably retopologize it and then do the high res, the low res, bake, um, and keep that detail. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
So I've been using RenderMan. Um, I did a piece where I had to do uh, some deformity geometry, and I, I wanted to, I was doing all my look dev in Keyshot, but uh, at the time I couldn't use it. So I started using RenderMan last year, and I love it. Um, I'm also going to use Arn a little bit just because it is native to Maya, and um, the new version uh, has some, some new features, and it works really nice. Uh, it's, it's a quick uh, throwback, I mean, just to use it. Um, I just got a PC uh, to do VR, so I'm starting to look into doing um, Octane and Redshift, which I haven't even, I just barely downloaded the demo, so I'm like trying to find time to jump into that, which is, which is cool. And um, that's about it. Uh, um, that's about the, the renders I use, yeah. It's almost like nowadays there's almost too many renders to, to worry about. <laughs> but, um, you know, I guess you pick what you need. Like if, if you're in production and if I'm doing like an animation, I kind of have to, to work with something that, I can, that will work nearly with Maya most of the time. But if I'm just doing concept stuff, I like to throw it into Keyshot. Um, Keyshot's been my go-to for like the last four years now. Yeah. But and also then like, you know, using Substance Painter in conjunction with it um, is great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, when you're setting up pieces for 3D printing, do you have any new tricks with uh, 8 to uh, shell your objects? Um, not for shelling. I don't think they've changed the shelling uh, commands, but I think using Booleans, you can do things where you can go into like the Q uh, uh, Z, Z modeler and um, duplicate your object and kind of push it in on the normal and use that as a cutter to make your shell, shelling object. So I think you can shell with the, with the live Boolean. It's a lot easier than just using that shell command. And then also, if you guys look at um, on the ZBrush forms, uh, Joseph Dress shows that really awesome technique where he created a, a P, he like reverse engineered like a, a knee joint or just a, a basic joint for two pieces. And it's like a, it's a, it's a saw that will cut. So you basically uh, inter interpenetrate both limbs and then you set up the cut for one for the other and it's a perfect, perfect match. Um, he's got it, I think it's available as a download or yeah, you should go to the, uh, definitely go to the, uh, either on the ZBrush Classroom or it's on, on the main site. But just search for Joseph Drust and you'll find it, a, a Boolean joint. It's an amazing thing. I haven't used it yet, but it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, we have a question on live stream. Uh, someone is curious about how you handle your UVs. Oh, UVs, yeah. Um, yeah. I do, uh, I do Maya, and I'll do ZBrush occasionally. Um, but yeah, I mean, like Maya's UV tools have gotten better. Um, I haven't really used too much of the of the external stuff like Aura has, but um, I've looked at them. But you know, I, I'm pretty comfortable with the Maya UV, so I've, I've been using those. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, any last takers before we change over to Eric? Yes. Okay. We'll take this last one. Hello. Um, for a beginner like me, do I need a particular, a particular experience using Maya to jump into ZBrush? Or um, what would you recommend for like, a guy like me who's a beginner in this um, type sure. of software? So um, yeah, you don't need to know Maya. The thing is, um, it's almost kind of like a good if you didn't know that interface, because ZBrush has been uh, People either love or hate the, the interface, and I was actually one of the people who, did, who couldn't get past it for years, and then I, I remember I made a concerted effort probably like seven years ago to say I'm just gonna sit down and use this program, and I just you know, spent a week and just got it. And then once you get it, and now I find myself like, I love being able to just like move around like this with my, you know, I'm just like taking my, my cursor and just moving on the, on the tablet um, versus having to like use the mouse and, and zoom in and stuff like that. It's like, there's a, it's a different way of, of thinking, but um, you know, they have all the basics. Like once, they, once they put the, the gizmo in here, this basically is something that all 3D packages have and you can pick this up pretty easily. So, you know, all the, the terminology and, the, and the, the ideas are the same. It's just a different GUIs to, to learn. You know, the thing about it with Maya is like, I, it's Maya's, Maya's been my go-to because I have to do animation in it as well and, and rendering. So I have to kind of think about when I'm doing production work, I, that's what I, I, I know, um, like the back of my hand. And with ZBrush, it's like, it's always a treat for me to get into use ZBrush when I can, and I try to force myself to use it more on projects. Um, so I, I tend to use it a lot on my personal projects, and then especially if I'm doing something that's organic on a project, um, it's a no-brainer to, to jump into ZBrush. But just kind of knowing how to get it out into other packages, like if you need to like do a high-res, low-res version, um, how you're using it for 3D printing or whatever, or, or VR or game work, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, jump in. And I think you can even get it on the Zebra's core. Um, you can get in a little cheaper if you want to and try it out. And if you're a student, I think there's uh, some special pricing for students too. So you should definitely try out the, the core version. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. OK. No less takers now. Let's have a round of applause for Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so we're a tiny bit early, so Eric, you have 